So point and shoot film cameras don't typically have a double exposure feature. Now I have shot double exposures with point and shoot cameras, but I've had to do it in weird ways like shooting a roll of film twice, basically shooting the roll, winding it, then unwinding it, shooting over it again back in the camera. And I've had some pretty cool results with it and I've really enjoyed that. But I finally found a point and shoot camera that has a double exposure feature. And it just so happens to be the goofiest camera I've ever used. What is it? Well, it's an Olympus Super Zoom 330, and it looks like a camcorder. Now, the Olympus Super Zoom 330 was released in 1990. It's got a self timer, it's got a couple different flash modes, continuous autofocus, and it has a focal length that goes all the way up to 105 millimeters, which is pretty cool. But above all else, it has a double exposure feature, which is super rare for a point and shoot camera to have. So one day I was looking at the double exposure hashtag on Instagram, just kind of looking to see what was out there. I often like to browse it because I I want to connect with other double exposure photography artists and uh, I found and I found one photo from someone who said they shot this double exposure in camera with a point shoot camera so I DM them and they told me what camera it was and I found it for $30 on Etsy shortly thereafter shout out to at visions of a life and Pricing for this camera is kind of all over the place. I've seen them as low as 30 bucks and I've seen them for 50 to 150. So I have no clue what kind of deal you're gonna get. I found this on Etsy for 30 bucks and it was in perfect condition, works great. So chances are, if I could find one at that price, you probably can too. But then it sat on my shelf for like six months. I didn't use it. I just thought it was kind of ugly, wasn't interested. I knew I was gonna take it somewhere eventually, but just didn't have the right vision for how I wanted to use it yet. But we went to the beach and I decided it was the perfect time to take it out. This year for Thanksgiving, we went to Kiowa Island, which is in the low country of South Carolina. And it's just a much more chill experience to go to the beach in November because it's cold and no one is there. Going to the beach in the summer is overrated. You're being cooked alive by the sun. Put a iris on a beach. My God, you better pray for them. You're getting sand in places you don't need to get sand in. And it's just crowded. So yeah, I would rather go to the beach when it's miserably cold and no one is there. But it's also just a different vibe. And I think that vibe is pretty interesting from a photography standpoint. Happy Thanksgiving. Is this a video? Yeah. Oh. You can say, say it back. Happy Thanksgiving. Okay, thanks. It would have been really rude if you didn't. You're talking to me. So to start off and really test the double exposure feature of this camera, I decided to uh, get a classic head against some sort of botanical backdrop type photo. like me like what, what was that what are you doing staring, just staring smiling yeah. like smiling. those videos that people have like they have somebody else they're like here it's ready to go and it's just their reaction to what people are doing <laughs> that must be a cool tiktok thing i don't understand you wouldn't understand i was pretty obsessed with this trail beach entrance spot right here just because i like the uh like jungle like feel around this cool like boardwalk kind of thing and so i shot a bunch of photos of this i also shot one i really like using my fujifilm xe4 which i mostly used to shoot this video So what film stocks was I shooting on this trip? I was shooting a lot during the day with Kodak Ultramax. So the first photos you have seen so far are Kodak Ultramax. Although this one of the trail is with Cinestill 800T. So basically the three stocks I used during this video is Lomo 800, Cinestill 800T, and Kodak Ultramax. You'll be kind of able to tell the Cinestill ones from all of them because if it's during the day, it's gonna have a little colder of a feel. And then Lomo 800 is a little orangier uh, at night than the Cinestill. Kodak Ultramax has all these really nice warm tones that I really enjoy. 
Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about different types of double exposures that I shoot. This one does it in a pretty basic way. It basically just takes two photos on a single frame of film. So you shoot one photo, then it allows you to shoot another, and then it will advance the film. Why it's so hard to find a point and shoot camera that has that feature, I don't know, but I think because most photography manufacturers and probably photographers see it as kind of gimmicky. Well, but see, there's a lot of people out there like me that love to build their art form around a great gimmick. There's really no room for like double exposure customization between images. You kind of just take the first image and take the second image and then just they crash into each other. Uh, you can turn on and off the flash between images, but that's kind of about it. So it's pretty simple to use and understand. Of course, I didn't just shoot double exposures with this camera. I would say I was really surprised by how fun this camera is to use. Yes, yeah, so I totally didn't mean to flash this guy with my camera. He flew by on his bike when I was trying to take a picture of his house. And there's the picture I was trying to take. I was kind of dreading carrying this thing around because all it has is this weird camcorder hand strap. And uh, I it, it seemed like a hassle to kind of get around. Turns out it is, but taking images is weirdly satisfying with this thing in a way that I don't fully understand, but I really like using it. And I was really surprised with how sharp the images were coming out of this camera. Like these images look pretty good. And I used to only shoot with my Nikon L35AF until it died because the images from that point and shoot were unusually sharp for a point and shoot. But I would say these images are competitive with the Nikon L35AF. You just have to get over the fact that your camera will look super dumb. I would say my main complaint that will keep me from carrying this around all the time is the form factor and the fact that there's no real good way to carry this thing around. There's no normal camera strap holes, so you can't have this around your neck or whatever. I tried clipping it to my belt at one point, which looked dumb, but uh, it was just easier than having to just hold it like this or keep it in my camera bag the whole time. So I took this camera out on the beach at night just to see kind of how it would end up, especially doing double exposures at night. And I think overall, I really like the set of photos, even though they aren't perfect. I don't think I really nailed any of them, uh, really. I think I really like this one the best. And I really like the idea of this one, except the house in the picture isn't fully sharp, but I still think it's a pretty cool vibe. And then this one, I like the idea of, I don't think it's fully successful, but I still think it's pretty neat. So anyways, again, these aren't perfect photos, but I really enjoyed shooting these and I kind of like how they turned out. Now, what about the super zoom part? Now that's really interesting. See, I am a primes guy. I like good old foot zoom. And this camera though, has such an incredibly long zooming focal length. It was really handy and I really enjoyed being able to zoom in and there was something weirdly satisfying about hearing the zzzz, the robot wiener come out of it. The robot wiener really came in handy for this next set of photos. So basically there were a bunch of shops near where we were staying and I went there at golden hour and just walked around and took photos and I used the super zoom to my heart's content. And these photos just really go to show how astoundingly sharp this camera is. And I would not have expected these images to look as good as they do. This camera is just really incredible. I think the creative possibilities of this camera are gonna keep me revisiting it from time to time. I'm excited to just keep pushing it and seeing what else this thing is capable of. I think it's definitely gonna make my normal camera rotation. And I've kind of made it a hobby.
hobby of mine to collect cameras that have a double exposure feature. And so I'm always happy to use a camera where I don't have to like trick it or do something weird that ends up slowly breaking it over time in order to double expose an image. This camera is odd though, in that it's weird for a camera to have the double exposure as such a large feature as it is in this camera. It's unusual that it's like one of the three features. Usually it's kind of like a gimmicky afterthought of a feature. It's just like a bonus extra feature in a camera. Gotta respect it for sure. Although if they can make one of these that looks like a regular camera, rangefinder or something like that, that would be cool too. I would really like that. And maybe there is one out there. And if you know of one, let me know in the comments. I would I would love to uh, buy one. You can follow me on Instagram at Will Malone. And you can follow my Polaroid Instagram account at RoydRage72. And thanks for watching. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos of me going to the beach exclusively at times where it's too cold and no one wants to be there.